In today's recipe we are making brownies and we are focusing on the melting method of cake making. So we're going to look at what we do with certain ingredients so that we can combine them together. So to start with, we've got all the ingredients all weighed out here. 350 grams of caster sugar, so it isn't um, a healthy cake. There's lots and lots of sugar in there that helps with the caramelization. It gives you that really gooey texture. 100 grams of flour, 75 grams of cocoa powder. So those two work together to give that bulk. 175 grams of margarine, which obviously is the part we're going to melt. A teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla essence, three eggs, and then I'm going to throw in some chocolate chips, which obviously are an optional ingredient. What we're going to do first of all is preheat the oven and we're going to grease proof our tray. So if you can, use a brownie tin. Obviously, if you've got the rectangle ones, as long as it's got quite a deep side, that's absolutely fine. So like the flapjack tins that can also be used. Or you could even just put it into a cake tin, it'd be round. You'd just be able to cut them maybe into triangle kind of shapes rather than the squares. And we're going to preheat the oven to gas mark four, 180 degrees. To start with, we want to grease this. I'm just going to use the lid from my um, margarine. It's got some butter on it. Just to rub around the outside, just to help so that the brownies don't stick to the tin. I'm going to put it along the bottom as well. And that's just going to give a little bit of something for the grease proof paper to stick to. So pop that in there, like so, and that is now ready to use later. Next step is to start with the melting process. So we are going to melt the margarine on a medium heat, so number four on my cooker, um, on the hob, and we're going to melt that until it is liquidy. Now with the melting method of cake making, it makes a denser, more moist cake. So brownies obviously know have got quite a wet texture, but they don't rise naturally on their own. We do have to add in a raising agent because there's not a lot of stirring with brownies. So we're not really aerating the product very much. So putting in the chemical raising agent like baking powder will help that to rise up. So whilst the butter, I'm going to put that onto there now, and we don't want, you've got to keep an eye on it, you don't want to burn it, but whilst that starts to melt, what we're going to do is put the caster sugar into the bowl here, and that will be combined with the melted butter in a few minutes. And then I'm going to crack my four, my three eggs into this bowl and just beat them ready for those to be added as well. So once all those three are in, just use a fork or a whisk and we can just beat them. I'm just going to get a little tiny piece of shell out that I've just managed to drop in. So just use the fork just to start to beat them. And what we do, when this is melted, we don't ever add anything into the pan, we add that butter back into a bowl, just to cool it down rather quickly, because we don't want to cook the eggs and end up with like a scrambled mixture within the brownie mix. We want it to be a lower temperature. So once that's beaten, that is ready, the sugar is ready, and once the butter is melted, I'll come back. Now that the butter is melted, we're going to pour that over the sugar and allow that just to slightly cool. So by adding it to a cold bowl with the sugar, it will bring that temperature down quite quickly. So we want to really just combine that. So it'll go, it'll look a little bit like a slush, if anything, as it starts to combine with the sugar. So we'll stir that all around and you are going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So I always use just the lid as a quite a bit of a guidance for a teaspoon. Add that in. Again, combine that through by putting a little bit of air through it with the stirring motion that will bring the temperature down. We don't want to put the eggs into here if they are over 60 degrees, if the butter is over 60 degrees still, as that's when the egg will start to coagulate and set. So we want to really stir it through. If I put my hands underneath the bowl now, it's just lukewarm. So now I can add in my beaten eggs and there's no risk that they're going to scramble and then spoil the texture of the brownies. What we want is those eggs to actually work to set the brownies when it's in the oven. We don't want them to start to set beforehand, which is why it's important that it's quite cool. 
So folding that around and it will just loosen the mixture. So instead of having that slush texture that we had a moment ago, it will go quite wet. And then we are ready to sieve in the dry ingredients. And we don't want to overwork this. So once we have put the sieved flour in and the cocoa powder, we don't want to then over stir it. We want to hold on to any air that we can put in there just so that it's not too dense and it's not dry. We want that moisture. So I'm going to now sieve in the flour and then add in that raising agent. So as I said before, we need a chemical raising agent because we've not done that aeration at the beginning, which we would do with a creaming method where we have the butter and the sugar in a bowl and mixing it together, that traps lots and lots of air. This method doesn't, which is why we're going to add in the teaspoon of baking powder. You don't want a heaped teaspoon, you don't want too much, you want an exact teaspoon, which is five grams. So we fold that through now. So using the figure of eight, again, no over stirring. If you over stir, you're going to knock it all the air out and end up with a very dense cake. They are naturally more dense and gooey, but we don't want them to be too flat. So keep stirring, going all the way around the outside, a few figures of eight just to really combine it through and you should start to see the flour disappear as it combines with the mixture. And as it gets to that stage, we can then sieve in the cocoa powder as well and just continue with that same structure of the figure of eight. I've got quite a lot of my cocoa powder still stuck in the bowl, so just stir that out. So sieve it through. Cocoa powder can be quite lumpy, so you might need to just Use the back of your hand just to push it through the sieve. So I've got a bit more left in the bowl. Can't miss out on any of that chocolate. And then again, sieve through, push those last bits, and then we can start to stir and fold in that and it'll start to have that really lovely gooey chocolatey texture to it, ready for it to be baked. And at this stage, as soon as all that flour and cocoa powder is no longer visible, there's no dryness, you stop stirring straight away and that can then go into the baking tin. Obviously, I'm going to add in some chocolate chips. You could then, if you wanted to, you could put some dark, um, cherries in there if you wanted to do more like a black forest uh, brownie or if you want to put white chocolate chips in there milk chocolate you could even put some chocolate um, chunks or smarties in there this is the stage you would add it in just at that very end as soon as that flour is almost gone pour in the chocolate chips and if you're doing that you want to look at about 50 grams no more you don't want to mess with that sugar content too much because it can make it so that the brownie doesn't actually set because it'll have too much sugar in it and it will be extremely gooey. So I've now got a chocolate mixture with all of the dry ingredients gone. So we're going to pour it into here and then bake it into the oven. So if I pour it in and then I can just show you what it looks like in the tin and I'll come back to you at the end. As you can see, the brownie mixture is now in the tin, ready. This is going to go in the oven. It takes about 35 to 40 minutes. Do check on it if you've got quite a warm oven. It might take slightly less time, so keep an eye. It will be slightly wobbly when you're taking out that high sugar content. will keep the mixture quite liquidy until it cools and it will actually harden as it cools. If you leave it in there until it's hard, you're going to end up with something that is very, very solid and not got that moisture in it anymore. So you've got to look for a very slight wobble when you take it out. So I'll come back to you once this has been baked. The brownies have now been in for half an hour, so I'm going to take these out and have a check. So as you can see, well risen brownies that now need to cool. So just before they start to cool, because as I said before, that sugar content's quite high, they can go really sticky. So it's worth, whilst it's still hot and soft, it's just making sure that it is separate from the tin. So you're just loosening all the way around. You can just, I'm using a palette knife, but you can just use a butter knife. 
You've got that greaseproof paper at the bottom, so the bottom will be fine, but it's just going to make it a lot easier to remove. And then what you can do, you don't take them out, but you can put them into their portions. So I'm going to, with it being a square tin, I'm going to put it into four columns with the palette knife, just going down to the center. And then I'm going to do four rows so that we end up with the 16 squares and hopefully quite equal with regards to our quality control. But then we leave them to cool. We don't try and take them out now whilst they are really, really hot. Obviously, if you're wanting to serve them warm, leave them for about five minutes and then try and get them out. But just be, bear in mind, they will fall or crumble a little bit more than if they're completely cool. So if I just show you this, and then obviously I'll put a photograph on of the finished product once they've cooled down. 